one of the valuable product in the world is crude oil but can crude oil can be used as a fuel so crude oil cannot be used as a direct fuel why so what is the importance of what is the significance of refining of petroleum can be discussed in this session and this is the sixth video in fuel you can watch all my previous videos in my channel so crude oil are petroleum or the natural available liquid fuels these are formed by anaerobic decomposition of dead organisms under earth crust generally these are found as dark greenish brown viscous oil so world is depending on the crude oil production the countries which are presently producing large amount of crude oil they are economically high in position compared to other countries so that much importance is there for petroleum or crude oil so nation economy is strongly depending on the crude oil sources and reservoirs so but like that much important crude oil can be used as a direct fuel in our engines so not at all why because crude oil may contain impurities like moisture sulfur and nitrogen if moisture is there crude oil will produce a low calorific value of heat so when you burn the moisture contained samples it produces a very low calorific value that's why we cannot use as a fuel and the samples contains the sulfur nitrogen in a high amount they produce as toxic gases during combustion process that's why we are not suggestible to use that type of materials a part of them crude oil is a complex mixture of various hydrocarbons that means it may contain c12 c35 long hydrocarbon chains and also in the c12 c35 the nature of hydrocarbons also varied so for example they may contain as uh, straight chain hydrocarbons or branched hydrocarbons you, you can see here straight chain hydrocarbons branch hydrocarbons like, um, cyclic hydrocarbons and aromatic hydrocarbons like the different types of hydrocarbons with different length of chains they are included in the crude oil it is a complex mixture we know the carbon chain increases the boiling point also increases if c35 hydrocarbons may have 450 degree centigrade around 450 degree centigrade they have boiling point that mean to start combustion this complex mixture we need to provide high heat energy heat energy initially that is called ignition temperature it it uh, uh, it required a very high re ignition temperature so a good fuel should be having moderate ignition temperature so when you burn the crude oil it produces heat energy but to start crude oil combustion we need to pay more heat energy than the production heat energy that's why crude oils are not suggested to use as direct fuels in our combustion engines so that's why we required purification and separation why because these are impurities that's why it's required purification it is a complex mixture that's why we need simplification by separation process this process is called refining refining means the process of purification and separation of various fractions present in the petroleum by fractional distillation is called refining of petroleum the industries are called refineries so here we have to two 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 works one is purification and another one is separation so first look at the purification so first one is separation of water here water is mixed especially salt water is mixed with the crude oil and they are formed emulsions in the earth crust high temperature and high pressures is there at this high temperature and high pressures the liquid water is completely miscible in the water in the crude oil crude oil and water completely mixed together that's why you are unable to identify two different layers oil layer and water layer you are unable to observe the two different layer why because they are completely soluble each other okay they form say emulsions so you cannot remove these things by simple filtration process or separating process okay now you need to pass this emulsion molecules through the highly charged electrodes 
when you pass highly charged electrodes this water molecule attracts each other and they become bigger when the water molecule size become bigger they form separate layer from the oil now you can remove you can separate the water and oil by different process okay like that we can remove the water present in the crude oil this process is called cotrell's method so next one is removing of sulfur compounds so sulfur when the crude oil having i no, i ratio of sulfur when you add copper oxide to the crude oil and treated with the copper oxide produces the copper sulfide so copper sulfide is a solid and we can easily filter off it okay like that we can remove the water and sulfur present in the crude oil as impurities so before going to fractional distillation we need to know some basic points so take exercise here it, there is a three beakers each beaker containing the a and b different liquid compounds so a boiling point is 100 degree centigrade and b boiling point is 60 degree centigrade for example, a, just to consider A is a water, water boiling point is 100 degree centigrade and uh, petrol or diesel, gasoline, gasoline boiling point is a 60 degree centigrade. So, b, three beakers having same quantity of A and B. So, in first case, I am heating the case one, first beaker at 40 degree centigrade. I am giving the 40 degree centigrade temperature to the A, case one beaker. In case 2, I am heating at 70 degree centigrade. In case 3, I am heating at 120 degree centigrade. So, in which beaker, which one be a gas in different cases? In case 1, which be as a gas? So, see here, A boiling point is 100 degree centigrade. That means, if you give the 100 or more temperature, then only A become as a gas from liquid state, right? At the same time, B having a 60 degree centigrade boiling point. That means if you give 60 degree centigrade or more temperature, then only B become as a gas. But in case 1, you just gave 40 degree centigrade. 40 centigrade is very less compared to 160 degree centigrade. That's why A and B both still behave as a liquids only. So in case 1, no one behave like a gas no one is there okay next in case 2 70 degree centigrade that means b boiling point is 60 degree centigrade you gave 70 degree centigrade that's why b converting as a gas right but a is still in the liquid form a is still in the liquid form so b is the gas in the case 2 situation okay next in the case 3 you gave 120 degree centigrade so b boiling point is 60 degree centigrade so 120 is a enough temperature and 8 boiling point is 100 degree centigrade but you gave 120 degree centigrade so both a and b become vapors b and b become converting into gas state so both a and b both act as a gases so from this point you can observe one thing by the depending on their boiling points we can separate different liquids when they are mixed each other. A and B are mixed each other. If, for example, in the case 2, if you open the tap, open the box, B converting as a gas. Now, gas will come out. That gas will be separated, in uh, collected in another tube. You can condense it. So, like that, A and B is separated here. So, when two liquids which are having different boiling points combined each other, by giving different temperatures, we can separate them. This is the basic principle involved in the fractional distillation. So have a look in different way. So A and B is there. So A and B is there. So at 150 degree centigrade, I am applying 150 degree centigrade here. So A having 100 degree centigrade boiling point and B having 60 degree centigrade. At 150 degree centigrade, both are become gases. The both come into the next chamber so both are becoming as a gases a and b so now i decrease the temperature of chamber at 80 degree centigrade so at 80 degree centigrade who become as a liquid who become as a liquid so just reverse the above topic so both are liquids i am converting both as gases okay now i decrease the temperature to 80 degree centigrade 
now who become as a liquid a or b see here a boiling point is 100 degree centigrade but you are maintaining only 80 degree centigrade that's mean a become as a liquid but B boiling point is 60 degree centigrade. Still there is a enough temperature. 80 degree centigrade is there. B still behave like a gas. Gas always moves upside. So gas B will enter into the other chamber. But A become liquid. That A can be separated within this tank only. Now B and you keep the temperature 50 degree centigrade. B also become liquid that liquid can be separated here. It's the same technique, same process, same principle is applied in the separation of different fractions present in the crude oil. That is called fractional distillation. See here, so what is fractional distillation? Crude oil is a mixture of hydrocarbons with specific boiling ranges called fractions. So crude oil contains C12, C35 carbons. This will be classified into different fractions. So that means C1 to C5 is one group, that group is called one fraction. C5 to C10 is one group that having a one fraction. Each fraction having the specific properties. So now these fractions can be separated by using fractional distillation column. In this first we have to do the, the crude oil. Total crude oil is heated at 400 degrees centigrade. That means we are giving maximum temperature to evaporate the all crude oil okay so all crude oil means c12 c35 c35 all mixtures are heated at over 50 degrees centigrade now all become as a liquids all become as a gases see here so first crude oil is heated in a furnace at 400 degrees centigrade in this furnace all crude oil become vapor that vapors are passed into a long vertical stainless steel chamber Okay, here gases is K. In this gases, different fractions is there. One fraction may have 400 degree centigrade boiling point. One fraction may have 300 degree centigrade. One fraction may have 30 degree centigrade. Like that, all mixtures are passed into this particular tank. Okay, now, so this tank is maintained at room temperature. This tank is maintained at room temperature. That means this vapors initially having 400 degrees centigrade by the time is moving 400 slowly decreases to 390, 380, 350, 360. So now temperature is going to decrease. Now different fractions have different boiling points based on their boiling points different fractions can be separated in different places for example now temperature is decreased to 350 so one fraction boiling point is 380 now the 380 boiling point fraction could be be like a gas or liquid it should be become as a liquid why because temperature is decreased less than 380 that's why it become liquid that liquid is separated here so like that which having higher boiling points they are easily condensed easily become as liquids so next boiling point having separated here so next boiling point separated here next boiling point which having very low boiling point it is separated as top of the end so based on their boiling points different fractions are separated at different place of vertical column okay so so you can see here you can see here so this is the crude oil crude oil is moving to the uh, chamber chamber is evaporating so some of the gases are entered they have a very low boiling point that's why they didn't uh, separate as a liquids okay so see here black one black one has a high boiling point that's why it is immediately separated as a liquid so like that different fractions different color balls taking as a different fractions they have a different boiling points based on their boiling points different compounds are separating at different places okay so like that we can have different fractions separated here like gases petroleumeter gasoline kerosene diesel av oil so if you observe here av oil is a high boiling point compound that's why it is initially bottom of the tank it is condensed as liquid and gases has low boiling point compounds that's why they are separated top of the tank okay so 
that is the point again i am explaining here so higher boiling point having fractions condensed perched at the bottom of the tank tower are low boiling point fractions collected as gas at the top of the tower this is the fractional distillation just thing is based on their boiling points based on their boiling point so like that we can separate different types of fractions so what are those fractions what are their uses first one is gases petroleum gases its boiling point is very less below 30 degree centigrade and composition is c1 to c4 carbons it is used as a domestical purpose at homes we can use as a um, uh, household purpose we can use lpg so next one is petroleum ether petroleum ether boiling point is around 30 to 70 degrees that means greater than petroleum gas okay so its composition is c5 to c7 it is used as a solvent in chemical industry next one is gasoline or petrol most useful fuel for this boiling point is 40 to 120 degree centigrade its boiling its uh, composition is c5 to c9 it is used as a Combustion, it is a, used as a fuel in the combustion engines. It is wrongly noted here. It is used as a fuel in internal combustion engines. And next one is separated one is naphtha. Its boiling point is 120, 180 degree centigrade. Composition is C9 to C10. It is used for the dry cleaning. Dry cleaning purpose in solvent as paints like that we can use. Next one is kerosene. Boiling point is 180 to 250. Composition is T C10 to C16. It is used for the um, household purpose, luminescence purpose, petromax stoves, lanthers. In that we can use as a fuels. And next one, diesel. So transport oil. Diesel can be used as a transport oil. Its boiling point is higher, 250 to 320 degrees. And the composition up to C19. And last one is at bottom of the tank av oil is separated this boiling point is almost likely to av oil at 400 degrees and it has composition 330 it cannot be used as a fuel just like just like uh, av oil just like crude oil crude oil and av oil both are not used as a fuel why because see here the boiling point is 400 degrees centigrade that means you want to start combustion, you have to give 400 or more temperature. That is impossible. Okay. So that's why we are unable to use AV oil or crude oil in the fuels. If you observe the trend here, observe the trend here. So from the up to down, the boiling points are increasing and composition also increasing. Okay. So what are the differences between the gasoline and diesel? So petrol is combination of c5 to c9 carbons diesel is c15 to c18 carbons okay so next one the boiling point is 40 to 120 because of lower carbon chain it has a lower boiling point but diesel because of higher carbon chains they have a 250 to 320 degrees centigrade and composition is almost the same so it has a c84 percent is carbon 15 percent is of hydrogen and almost one percent is of nitrogen sulfur oxygen but uh, diesel also having same but small difference carbon having 84 hydrogen is 15 to 16 percentage and uh, it has less impurities less than one percent is less impurities and next one important one is calorific value Gasoline calorific value is 11,250 kilocalorie per kg and uh, diesel calorific value is slightly less than the petroleum or uh, petrol or gasoline and petrol is uh, and next one is gasoline is a higher thermal temperature that means it's highly stable at high temperature why because its boiling point is 320 degree centigrade okay so and they, they require different types of engines. Petrol or gasoline can be combustion in internal combustion engine like motor vehicles. But diesel engines are different. In heavy vehicles like cars, trucks, we have a large engine that is called diesel engine. In diesel engine only diesel can be burned. In petrol engine, diesel cannot burn. Okay. And also diesel cost is very uh, comparatively cheap than the petrol. These are the main differences between petrol and diesel oil. So this is the topic. In this topic, we discussed what is refining. So what is the importance of refining? How can, what is the different fractions obtained in refining process? 
and finally the characteristics of petrol and diesel we studied thank you for watching thank you very much